Before we get going with this video, it is for subscribers only. So if you haven't hit that subscribe button, do so now so you don't miss this content or any future content. All right, I have taken my player hat off for this video and I have put on my proverbial business hat. I'm gonna look at this through the eyes of a businessman and what I see. One thing that we know for sure is that the Mets are gonna met. Every Mets fan knows that, every baseball fan knows that. But with the new ownership, what is that even gonna mean? What's that gonna entail moving forward? For those of you who've been living under a rock, Steve Cohen has bought the Mets, it is official, and he's done four things already that have really stood out to me, the businessman, and I'm gonna go over those. So the first thing that he did, the very first thing before anyone even knew that he was on Twitter, is he got on Twitter and he connected with the Mets fans. Sending a simple tweet asking what they could do to make the Mets fans experience better. I mean, this is a brilliant move. This is probably the most brilliant move that I've seen, which is why I put it at number one. Ultimately, if you're a businessman, if you own a company, if you are running an organization, you have customers. You have a product that you are trying to sell to the customer, and you have customers that you hope will buy your product. Connecting with them and giving them some input onto what the product is and how it's shaped and how it's presented and what they want more of and what they want less of is a brilliant move. It's a very simple one. It's something that almost all companies do. It's something that Apple does. It's something that Toyota does. Every company that you know, every product that you buy, they do some sort of customer research, market research. They interact with their customers. They send out emails and they realize, okay, well, this type of email didn't get read as much as this type of email. All right, we know something about our customers. I mean, Facebook is famous for doing this. They collect all of this data. Uh, same thing with Twitter and these big, you know, Google, these really big tech companies. They collect all this data on their users, on their customers, and then they're able to sell that to people who want to advertise so that the people who are advertising know what kind of customer they're reaching and they know more about their customers. So this is all just very obvious stuff. Unfortunately, in baseball, this doesn't happen very often. I mean, when's the last time that you can think of that you had an owner on Twitter asking the fans, his customers, what they want? What, what, more, do they, what more do they want? How can the experience be better? What can we do at the ballpark? You know, what, what, can, what, can, we, what can we do as an ownership group to make you guys happier, to, to make you more involved in the Mets, to bring you in and form this, this group, this tight-knit family type feeling group? So that's the first thing that he did. He got on Twitter and he connected directly with the fans. I think, I mean, it generated a ton of buzz. That's fantastic marketing, first off. T created a ton of buzz, as if the sale itself wasn't creating enough buzz around the Mets. Now you got the owner of the Mets on Twitter, talking to fans on Twitter. I mean, how, that's pretty cool. You know, for, that's a great bit of marketing from a business standpoint. Also, you're learning from your fans. You're interacting with them and you're learning kind of what they want and what they feel. Now, Cohen was a Mets fan, so he has his own opinions on the Mets over the course of his life. I mean, he's, he stated he's always been a Mets fan. He's lived in the area his whole life. So he has his feelings, but he's biased. Everyone's biased inherently. You see the world the way you see the world, and other people have different opinions that are equally as important. And so he's trying to collect those. So that's the very first thing that he did that I thought was just absolutely brilliant. It's something that I hadn't seen before. Uh, and maybe it's out there and I just don't know, but it's something that I hadn't seen before and I thought it was a fantastic strategic move on his part. Number two, he outlined the what. In order for an organization to go somewhere, in order for a person to go somewhere, you have to know where you're trying to go. Uh, you wouldn't type in to Google Maps, you hop in your car, you bring up Google Maps, like, okay, I wanna go to my destination and you, you go, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that, you would type in the destination first, which means you have to know the destination before you go there. So what did he do? He came out and he said, a World Series in three to five years. He outlined the what, that is the goal, that is where we are going. So now as a whole organization, from the players, to the coaches, to the staff, to the scouts, to the analysts, to the, everybody in the organization knows that we are going in this direction. We're gonna win a World Series in three to five years. Now, whether that happens or not, doesn't matter, because from a business perspective, that statement is all about aligning everybody's interests and aligning everybody's goal and vision in the same direction 
as the person who's running the organization, which in this, in this case is Cohen. So he's giving clear directive. Everything that we do as a company, as an organization, I'm looking at this as a, I'm looking at the Mets right now as a company uh, instead of a baseball organization because I, I have a feeling that's kind of how it's going to be run. He has said as much, and we'll talk about that in a second. But as a company, now you know the exact goal. You know the directive. We're going to win a World Series in three to five years. Great. Now, if, if any, anything you do has to contribute to that goal, from the players to the coaches to the staff, everybody I mentioned, it has to contribute to that goal. If what you are doing does not get us closer to winning a World Series in three to five years, then you shouldn't be doing it. But you can't have that type of an organization. You can't have that unless you know exactly what the goal is. A lot of times in baseball, the, the goals are very nebulous. And this is one thing you learn when you, when you talk about marketing and you talk about sales. You have to tell the customer exactly what you want them to do. Buy now, sign up now, stuff like that. Very direct, clear language. In baseball, a lot of times, you, well, you know, we're trying to run an organization, we're trying to develop people, and you know, we hope to draft well, and then we can put some pieces together, and we want to compete uh, for a World Series, and that's all fine. Those are all noble goals, but they're not definitive, and they're not clear. So you have to make a goal explicit. We will win the World Series in three to five years, period. That is the goal. Now you have something, you have bedrock, you have something firm to evaluate everything else relative to. And that brings me to point number three, which is he defined the how. So now that you have the what, you have the bedrock, now you have to figure out how that's gonna happen. And a lot of times, if the bedrock isn't getting laid very often in professional baseball, the how surely isn't getting defined, all right? You have, well, you know, we're gonna draft and we gotta get good people. It's like, okay, well, what are good people relative to what our operation is trying to do? Does that mean that a, a, is a good person someone who believes in Christianity? Is a good person someone who uh, is, a, is a Democrat? Is a good person someone who is, you know, a family man and raises kids? Like, you gotta define what your organization feels is a good person if you're trying to draft good people. And so this starts to become the how. Well, we want to draft good people. Okay, now we define exactly what good people are. Now, how are we gonna screen for that? How are you gonna go find a good person for your organization? Now, this is just one example. Um, we can talk about, we're gonna win with speed. You know, we, that's how we wanna win. We wanna win with speed. Okay, well, well what does that mean? How do, you, how do you win with speed? Well, okay, we gotta get guys that are fast. Well, being fast isn't good enough because you gotta know how to steal bases, you gotta know how to run the bases if speed is gonna benefit you. You gotta know how to take angles in the outfield to get the most out of your speed. So knowing that you wanna win with speed is a good thing, but knowing how you're going to win with speed is the next thing, and that's really what he's doing here. So what did he say? He said, we're gonna run it like my hedge fund. Point 0.72, we're gonna run it like that, we're gonna run it like a business, and in order to do that, we have to have analysts. I mean, I've been using data analysts for my hedge fund, you know, we've been doing this thing, we've been successful, we've been diving into big data, we've made a lot of good decisions, the, the data has informed our decisions. So we're gonna apply the same concept over here, we're gonna get a lot of data, we're gonna look at it, we're gonna analyze it, we're gonna use that to inform our decisions. So that's, that's number one. They said, this is the how, we're gonna use data. They also said that we're gonna get the best people in here, we're not gonna micromanage, one person isn't gonna to try to do it all, we're not just gonna have baseball people, we're gonna have a lot of smart people in very niche areas. We're gonna have a smart coach because a smart coach makes the, makes the players better, but smart players also makes the coach better. We're gonna have smart analysts because smart analysts make the organization better, but they also make the coach smarter and the coach probably makes the analysts smarter. So if you get individual skill sets, people with very specific skill sets that are brilliant and you put them all together as smart people in a room, the entire collective gets much smarter. So that's another thing he said, is that we're gonna come out, we're gonna get really smart people to do their jobs in their very specific niches, we're going to use analytics. Um, and that's, and that's, the, that's really what the whole point of this is. He's defining how he's going to do it. We're gonna run it like a hedge fund, we're gonna use analytics, we're gonna get a bunch of smart people in the room, we're gonna set up methods by which we evaluate our processes, right? You have to have a method by which you can evaluate how your operation is running. And traditionally in baseball, the method that you use to, op to, to evaluate your operation is, well, did we win games? But there's so many steps between running a good operation 
and then winning baseball games. You have to run a good operation first, and then you have to have some luck on your side, and you have to get the right types of people in place. You have to get the right types of coaches, the right types of players. You have to have the right luck on the field, the medical staff, all these different things. So just to say, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get smart people, and we're gonna win games, and 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 that's how we're gonna evaluate the success of everything. Well, when when you don't win games, how do you then go and fix the problem? Because you don't know what the problem is, because you haven't define the processes explicitly. Now, he's creating a feedback loop. He's saying, okay, this is where we are and this is where we wanna be, right? We know exactly where we are right now. We haven't won a World Series in a while and we know we wanna be at a World Series in three to five years, so now we're gonna define a process. So in year one, we think this process is gonna work. Great, you're gonna implement the process and then you're gonna say, well, you know, in this area, we exceeded expectations. So this process is probably working. But in this area, we didn't exceed expectations. So we need to alter this process. And none of this has anything to do with the wins on the field necessarily. It has to do with how are the people performing. How did we feel our coaching was this year? Well, let's evaluate our coaches against this framework that we have set up. Did we, uh, and I have no idea what the coaching, what the coaches are going to try to do or, or what their methods of feedback are. But from, from an analytic standpoint, did we learn what is effective for our specific team this year and how, how much did we learn? How much did we accomplish? That doesn't necessarily mean that you won a bunch of games or not, but you're learning about your organization and your players and trying to figure out how the best way forward for your specific group, what, what that best way forward is, how it's gonna manifest itself. So that's what he's doing right here. He's saying, we're gonna run this with these feedback loops, we're gonna get smart people and we're gonna have a way of evaluating our operation not just by wins on the field, which is great because you cannot win on the field consistently over a long period of time unless you have a very consistent and well-run operation to, re to produce repeatable results. You can get lucky, you can have a really good team, everyone has career years and you go to the postseason and maybe you get hot at the right time and you win the World Series, that's great. How do you win the next year's World Series? How do you know that if we get these types of people in here, we can produce these types of results and we're going to be in the playoffs every year? How do you run an organization like the Rays, where they're competitive every single year, or the Dodgers, how they're competitive, they have a bunch of homegrown talent for it's making the minimum right now uh, because they can develop talent, but they can do that repeatedly. So they know they can trade someone to get the, the pieces in. They can go sign a Mookie Betts. They can go sign, they can go trade away prospects and they can get a, well, I guess they didn't even sign Mookie Betts. They, they first traded for him, so they had to trade away prospects to get Mookie Betts, and then they were able to sign him. But you have to know that you can replace those prospects, so they have a system by which they can draft people. They know they've refined their drafting process. They've refined their player development process. They've refined their coaching process. So now you have a pipeline by which you can produce repeatable results, and that's, what's Cohen, that's what Cohen is trying to do with the Mets. That's what he's saying, is we're going to have these feedback loops. We're going to develop an organization and all this different stuff. The fourth thing that stood out, which is a big one to me, was he's setting himself apart. He's setting himself apart from his main competitor in New York, which is the Yankees. And what do I mean by this? How do I know this? Well, they've built one of the most iconic worldwide brands in the history of the world. It's great. There's Yankee hats all over the world, but that's not the only way to do it. And if the Mets are gonna come in and try to beat the Yankees at that game, they're going to lose because the Yankees have a long history of doing it that way. So how do you compete in the business world? Well, you find a different route. You find something that's different, that's unique. You offer the consumer a different experience. You offer them a more personalized experience maybe, or maybe it's a less personalized experience. Maybe it, but you find what your competitor is doing and you do something that's different enough that it sets you apart. So now you're not competing in the exact same space, you're kind of running parallel with each other. The Yankees are trying to win baseball games, the Mets are trying to win baseball games, that's great. But how are the Yankees doing it? If you think about a Yankee fan and what a Yankee fan means, and I, I've never lived in New York, so I don't have a good history on this, but for, for you fans watching, if you think about what a Yankee fan means, what does that mean in your head? What goes through your head about when you think of a Yankee fan? And what goes through your head when you think about a Mets fan? They're different fan bases. They have different interests. Different things appeal to different people. So the Yankees appeal to one group and the Mets appeal to another group. So setting those apart, making them as different as possible while still going in the same direction of trying to win baseball games makes a lot of sense. 
because now for all the people who don't necessarily like the Yankee brand, they may like some parts of it, but they're missing something. Their fan experience isn't the best. Their, their interaction with the players isn't the best. Maybe they don't like how they don't get inside information from, uh, from the team on player injuries. Maybe that's one of the things. I, I don't know. If the Mets can offer those things to those fans that are not being fulfilled fully by the Yankees, now they have a, a, a way of pulling those middle ground of fans away into the Mets uh, ecosystem. Now you create more Mets fans. Now you can grow your brand. Now you, okay, now we've, we've, we've handled New York. We're competing very effectively in New York with the Yankees. Now how do we get outside of New York? How do we spread the, the Mets brand to the whole country, to the whole world? And if you look at it from a business standpoint, of course, now there's the investment part. You invested two point whatever, uh, over $2 billion in this team. If you're Cohen, you invest $2 billion in this team. You're, of course, looking for a return on your investment, but that return doesn't always come by making money. And he's said this much. He's not planning on making money on the, on the Mets. He makes his money through his hedge fund. That's great. But you're still looking for an, a return on your investment. It could be the value of the franchise growing so that if you do sell it in 30 years, you've now made a return on your money. It could be the intrinsic value of having something and, and winning a World Series because that might bring value to, uh, that might bring a, a sense of accomplishment. It might be, bring value in that way to Cohen himself. Of course, it would bring a lot of value to the fans. Maybe he's trying to do something for the city. I don't know his motivations. However, he wants a return on his investment in some way, shape, or form. And the best way to do that is to differentiate yourself, differentiate yourself enough from the competition that you can run in your own lane, that you can have your own little carve out. You can, you can bring in your fans and you can do things your way and you're separate and you're a very distinct brand in New York. It's a big enough city with enough people and enough worldwide exposure to support two iconic baseball brands. I'm excited to see what happens.